You're listening to One Space Love Podcast and I am your host, Stephanie Pappas. And today is the first series of the first first episode of the first series. And I wanted to be your special guest today because I wanted to share my why and my how I came about to do One Space Love Podcast. So I like to start off the shows. I was doing it when I had a radio show on Bondi Beach Community Radio and also um, when I was doing barefoot talks up at the Central Coast. And I used to start off by asking the guest, could you please finish the statement, I am? So I'm going to finish the statement. It is not an easy question to answer. I am a mother of four children. I have twin seven-year-olds, girl and boy. I have a 13-year-old son and my eldest son is going to be 18. I am a lover of music. I am a music events producer. I am a fashion designer. I am a yoga teacher. I am a home cook. (laughs) I am passionate about health and well-being. I'm passionate about um, authenticity. I am I am love and I am light. Yeah, it's not an easy question to answer. So I am with you today and I am going to share some more about my journey and be vulnerable with you. So for those of you meeting me for the first time, Most people know me as Stephanie Cranford, but I've gone back to my maiden name, which is actually Papadopoulos, but I've shortened it to Pappas. Um, I started One Space 10 years ago, roughly 10 years ago, and it started off being called My Heart Space. And I was living down in Melbourne at the time. I had been living in New York, and before that I was in Italy, a little bit back to Sydney, but then I was down to Melbourne. So I think that's important because I hadn't been back to Sydney in quite some time on a a long-term basis. So I was now in Melbourne and I had a clothing label called Stephanie Cranford Clothing and um, I sold to department stores in the UK, New York and um, Sydney, Melbourne and I sold to boutiques. And at this time my second child wasn't sleeping very much so I hired some sales girls from an agency in Sydney. I won't mention the name. And um, a friend of mine, also an Australian designer, um, also used them as her sales agency at that that season. So um, what happened was they didn't sell the collection to the big department stores. They, They lost those sales, which is a big thing when you invest in Fashion Week and putting together a collection at this at this caliber to show to um, department stores when you've been selling to them for years. So this was a, a big decision I had to make and I decided to to close down the clothing business. And so what happened was after that, I no longer had my I am because I was no longer feeling I am a fashion designer. And I had been a fashion designer since I remember I'd been saying since I was little even in high school I was telling people I am a fashion designer I just knew it it was like part of me (laughs) sorry that's my children in the background we're all in isolation here and I have children at home so I'm just going to keep going with it (laughs) so um so I lost my I am and I, after some time at home as a stay-at-home mum, I went and studied at the Australian Yoga Academy and did a year-long course of how to be a yoga teacher. One of the modules, which is one of those keystones in my journey, was um, with Dominic Salerno, who's the founder of um, Australian Yoga Academy um, teacher training, and it was on bhakti yoga, music, chanting, Sanskrit. So I just, during this module, I just had this like, fire coming up inside me and I was like wow I love this I just loved bhakti music um learning about the call and response in chanting which I'd love to have a show to talk to you about bhakti music because I've had a lot of experience in it I was one of the first people um there are other people that I would love to talk to and bring in um but I was one of the first people in Australia to bring bhakti music to Sydney um 
so I moved after I finished the yoga course, I moved back to Sydney. And as I said, I still was like, I, I wasn't a yoga teacher because I just finished studying. So I still, I am a stay at home mum. And I felt quite lost. Um, I signed up or I, I went online and Googled singing and music and, and bhakti music. And I found a workshop with Prem and Jeffro from Sacred Earth Music. And I could see in Melbourne they had a lady from Denmark called Deva Talasi, who's one of those beautiful blocks in the journey. And blocks meaning like jewels, beautiful stones, um, as is Prem and Jeffro from Sacred Earth Music. And, yeah, so um, she was offering a dan- dance component at the retreat in Melbourne. But there was she wasn't coming to Sydney. So I reached out to Prem and Jeffro and I said, is there any chance she could come to Sydney? Because I'm in Sydney now. I'm not in Melbourne. I'm in Sydney. So can she come to the Sydney workshop? And they said, no, actually, it just doesn't work with her timing. But maybe you could reach out to her. Maybe she could come at another part of her travels. So I reached out to her and um, straight away we had a connection and she said to me, could you organise the workshop? And I was taken back. I was like, me? I, I'm just a stay-at-home mum. I... Look, I, I'm a fashion designer. I, I don't know how to organise a workshop for you. I mean, actually it was perfect. I had been organising events since I was a teenager and my parents would vouch for that. I organised shows. Well, actually since I was a child I was producing events with my all my cousins in my backyard and making the, the curtain on the clothing line with fabric and I would choreograph them all with my brother and We'd produce music and, I mean, we were like little entrepreneurs from children back in eastern suburbs of Coogee. Um, But, no, when I was uh, actually in my later years of school, I did choreograph and produce events, um, especially when AIDS was all over our media and I was just so taken back by it and just had so much empathy. I I organised an event to raise awareness for AIDS that was held at the Metro Sydney and I would have been 19 years old. Um, I also organized another charity event, um, in Double Bay. So, and then I went on to have a job for Mercedes Australian Fashion Week before I had my clothing label and I worked for New York Fashion Week and, um, assisted on L'Oreal Fashion Week. So here I was asked to organize a workshop. And that's really where it all began because through there, I mean, the One Space Love journey, not my life, but my new life, <laughs> new beginning. And so where am I? So I I was taken on this experience where I had to figure out where to hold the workshop. She It wasn't just a workshop. She wanted to have live musicians. So I contacted one of my school friends at the time um, that I'm back in Sydney. Her name is Christina Johnson. Um and Christina was a, a beautiful key um, angel in this experience because she introduced me to her boyfriend at the time, Nick, who is now her husband, which is a great outcome. And um, he was a, is a musician, was a musician, is a musician. So he helped us connect with musicians and made that possible. And then we needed a sound engineer. And Christina was a such a, a solid... Um, uh, like, well, I've lost my words, but she really helped make that event possible. So huge gratitude to Christina. Um, she really anchored, that's what I was trying to say, she really anchored um, the belief in me to make this possible. She really helped being an instigator in that. So the first event was held at Paddington Uniting Church, actually in the hall, at the back of the church, and I discovered this space then I met Lulu Omishka down in Bondi. Actually, sorry, I met Lulu from Lulu Omishka. Lulu Omishka weren't, weren't Lulu Omishka then. And Lulu um, handed me a CD of Kevin James and said, hey, I think you should check this out. And I did. And I had this like, again, this fire inside me. And it was like, it, it took me over. Like, you got to contact him. I'm like, why? Just contact him. So I contacted him. He said, can you organize a concert for me? Sure. So I organized a concert for him and it was at the Paddington Church. And from then it's just the one brick was laid out after another. 
I went on to host events there for seven years at the Paddington Uniting Church. Events at the Paddington Uniting Church, so many other artists um, came in after that, but we um, had events with Sacred Earth, Oka, Gunga Giri, uh, Bobby Alu, Nikki Bomba, Mark and Dea, let me think, uh, Lulu Mishka, Noam Blatt, Shai Shriki. Um, yeah, I'm going to forget people. Oh, how could I forget? Ben Lee. Ben Lee, um, he's going to be one of my first guests on this One Less Space Love podcast. We did his Ayahuasca album launch at the Paddington United Church. Uh, we had El, um, the elder Uncle Bob Randall, such a memorable event, um, talking about Kanyini. And um, Michelle Mayer's event um, with her documentary, Dances of Ecstasy. I mean, so many of these events had lines going down Oxford Street to get in. So at the time, the events just grew bigger and bigger and bigger over the years and the conscious community gathered. Um, there, there were write-ups in the music papers at the time. Yes, there was music papers that we would collect and um, there was editorial. <laughs> and so they would write about the events of My Heart Space at the Paddington Chapel and how this new conscious music movement was happening and I was the founder. And so. I was taken very quickly, you know, on this journey that I hadn't planned. And the the bigger and bigger it got, I actually had to move the shows out of the Paddington Church. And I started to, which was a great gift as well. And the events, um, I held them at the factory um, in Marrickville, um, Metro Sydney, um, in community spaces like Petersham Town Hall, Marrickville Town Hall, Bondi Pavilion, and then even went on to hold um, a couple of events at the Sydney Opera House. And it was it was very difficult to bump in and out of these events constantly, constantly, and have these four children at home. So I really had this like I had a vision since since I was young to have a space, I guess. I didn't know what the space was about. I thought it was still to do with fashion, but to gather people and unite people. And so once the events had started happening more and more, I thought, look, I really think it needs its own space. All the events always had um, great food and and um, it wasn't just about the event. There was aspects of it that people came in and it was like a full experience. Um, I guess, you know, having that fashion background, it really helped me to create a space that was warm and inviting for people. And often that's been the feedback people have told me that they miss. So um, I had like sponsors such as Amazonian, um, Raw Sea, Loving Earth Chocolate, Wild Kombucha, Teetonic Teas, um, Alkalife Water, so many, many more. And we'd have chefs come in and do um, pop-up, um, like a pop-up food stall and got to work with some great vegan chefs, raw chefs, um, Ayurvedic chefs. Yeah, so it was all coming together. and But there was a point when I was like, it, it needs its own space. And so this is when some beautiful community members came in and their, a crew started to happen, One Space crew. I met Sebastian Parisi at the Factory Theatre and he was definitely an angel that dropped on my on my right in front of me on my path <laughs> sound effects from the children we are all in isolation I'm going to say that again and we have to keep going so um yeah he was a an angel and without him one space HQ Bondi wouldn't have been possible there was other angels that I I wouldn't have been able to do it financially without these angels so the space came about and it was in Bondi and regular events were happening. So I'm going to move through this now because running that venue um, with with artists such as um, Shanti Fire, Lulu Mishka came back, Ben Lee was there, Tina Malia, um, who else? There's so many. Um, Kali Dad, Tijuana Cartel, The Rhythm Hunters, Declan Kelly, Kevin James, uh, Shri Pralad, Dave Stringer. 
Jai Jagadish. Jai Jagadish. Uh, there was so many. It, it was, and we also had workshops, yoga classes, um, meditation teachers, um, art therapy. So there was a lot happening in this space. And two years down the track, I made a very difficult decision. I left my marriage and I decided to close the doors on this community space. Now, this was not an easy decision. It was a decision based on my own, my own heart space. So I actually went full circle back to my heart space and a decision on my health and well-being and um, for the health and well-being of myself and my children. So closed up everything. I was also doing a radio show on Bondi Beach Radio called One Space Radio. Closed it all down. Um, one of the people that most affected was Sebastian Parisi and, I mean, he had to go on his own journey because he very much loved being part of that that community. But we just we couldn't hold it all together anymore. Um, it was a big commitment. Um it was financially a big commitment and energetically a big commitment. And I guess f- what I've learned in order to be in that position, you have to have your own personal roots really solid in the ground. And mine were not. My my tree was swaying back and forth. And I had to I had to let it go. So I took my children and I moved out of Sydney. There's more to the story, which I share sometimes on um, there's a bit of it on my blog, onespace.love. But we'll see where this goes and I can share more. I'll, I'll be feeding off you, the listeners, to see how much, you know, where you want it to go. We'll just, as I said, I'm surrendering to this path. We'll see where it goes. Um, but I moved up to the Central Coast and I spent a lot of time outdoors um, connecting with Mother Earth. Um, I got introduced to all the bush walk trails up there at Booty National Park and so grateful for that experience. Um, spent a lot of time barefoot walking in the bush, swimming in the ocean daily um, and just, you know, really in isolation with my children, myself, being creative. I taught myself how to play guitar. (laughs) I wrote some songs, Um, which is all just fun. You know, it's just actually incredible when you get to stop because, as I said, I'd been an entrepreneur since I was a teenager I'd started. I was working in a hair salon and doing my HSC and then went straight into study and then went, was working and studying and so and then I started my own clothing label so I was always an entrepreneur so this was actually the first time I stopped everything and I stood still during that time after like a year and a half of being still I I had I saw that Mike Love was coming into um the Rhythm Hut playing at the Rhythm Hut in Gosford and this is what happens to me. I, I, my body, I get these like sensations that tells me, um, you know, and I and an inner voice, an inner voice, not just a sensation, but an inner inner guidance. And so I thought, I, I want to. I loved the Bondi Beach Radio, and I loved doing my show. And I thought, I want to interview Mike Love. I've always wanted to interview Mike Love on my show. So, with the help of some great friends, I got to interview Mike Love, and I called it Barefoot Talks. Um, those shows were videoed. I interviewed Mike Love. Uh, I interviewed Ash Grunwald and Danny Carr from Earth Bottles. Um, and then I got to interview, um, well, all the interviews are up on One Space Love YouTube and they're also on my blog, onespace.love. So they're all there under um, video. But I just didn't feel that was a path to continue. My main job or my main occupied, uh, what what fills most of my time in my day is being dedicated to my children and dedicated to my well-being and my self-love. So whatever came in into that has to complement all that. So I started to gather equipment to do a podcast and I just let it sit there because fear was really taking over now. I was like, how can you do all these things and now you're going to add a podcast? Like I just, it didn't make sense to me. I didn't leave school thinking I'm going to be a host of a podcast when I'm older. 
and I'm a lot older. <laughs> so that wasn't something that was a knowing for me. What was a knowing for me was I want to inspire people with whatever I do and I want to make a difference and I want to be a voice for change. So I guess that has always been the common mission that I've shared with everything that I've done. And now we are in actual isolation all around the world, not just in Sydney. I am at home with my children and I am homeschooling them, something that I always dreamed of. I'm actually doing it. I'm homeschooling them. Um, I'm getting to to be a creative mum. I'm getting to cook daily from scratch all my meals because I don't want to go outside and buy takeaway food. Um, So I thought now is the time more than ever. So what is stopping me was fear. So I decided to push that fear aside. I have a chat with it now and then to come back into my heart and to just take the first step. So here I am. I have many, um, well, along the journey, I've met many spiritual healers, artists, and music musicians that are making a difference through through their their music. Um, I call them music change makers, um, but they're they're artists, they're musicians, and they're living and breathing their message in their lifestyle, they integrate it in their lifestyle. And these are who I want to share with you through this podcast. Um, I want to share their wisdom and their messages and go into their why and how they get to do what they love every day and turn it into their business effortlessly. I mean, I'm sure right now it's pretty tough for the music industry, for any industry. So I thought what a, it's a good time to have a chat. Wherever you are in isolation, this is a time for us to to really go within and be still. I know a lot of us are busy. We're running businesses from home. We've got children or or you might be, um, you know, dealing with relationships that you never thought you'd be confined with, whether it's your, your flatmate or your partner that you were having troubles with before. So you might be dealing with addictions now you you have to face it all. We have nowhere to run now. Use this time to connect to your heart space, to connect to your center, to align, to be still. And listen to what it is, your inner calling that you've been so afraid of. Because now is not the time to choose fear. Now is the time to choose love. You're listening to One Space Love and I'm your host, Stephanie Pappas.